It normally takes a year for China's parliament to pass legislation. This time it happened in record time, just 40 days. The new security law completed its passage after a vote by the country's most powerful political body, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. In Hong Kong, China's supporters were also celebrating before the news had even been confirmed. A contentious measure that's bitterly divided the city was once more defended by its chief executive. The legislation upholds important legal principles, such as presumption of innocence and protection of the rights of the suspect. It will have no retrospective effect. Her critics here say the new law now threatens to stifle even small displays of dissent, like this one in a local shopping mall on Tuesday. China is, um, is, passing, is passing the law without, without even asking um, uh, Hong Kong news and not going through the proper procedures. The law's passing had an immediate political impact. Democracy activist Joshua Wong announced he was resigning from the political party he helped found before the party itself was dissolved. Also disbanding two other smaller political groups that had advocated independence. For Hong Kong, this is the most dramatic development since its return from British to Chinese rule. Since then, China's had thousands of troops garrisoned in the city. Now its secret agents will be able to legally operate here as well. A body to gather intelligence will also be set up. The timing of this new law is no coincidence. Wednesday marks the 23rd anniversary of Hong Kong's handover from Britain to China. Police have sealed off the area around a convention center where locals and mainland dignitaries commemorate the event each year. Before the handover, China promised that Hong Kong's freedoms, including an independent legal system, would continue for 50 more years. To many people here now, it seems that promise has been broken. July the 1st is traditionally a symbolic day marked by a large march, but police have denied an application for another this year, citing the coronavirus and the potential for violence. Several groups, though, are vowing to test the ban. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. Well, Martin Lee is founding chairman of the United Democrats, which became the Democratic Party of Hong Kong. He was also the face of the democracy movement before the handover in 1997. And he explains how Hong Kong's power is being eroded. My party will stay on and I will stay in Hong Kong. Of course, we realize that uh, the prospects of our being put into prison would be very high with the passage of this law. But what is really frustrating is that even though we know this law will be operative tomorrow, none of us have seen a copy of it. So we don't know what sort of offences uh, we might be committing tomorrow. I mean, this is ridiculous. But I'm not too concerned about the actual contents of the law because I expect them to be very draconian and unreasonable. But the real impact on Hong Kong is much further than that. It's much more serious than that. What this piece of legislation in fact, for me, means for Hong Kong is that when the British government returned Hong Kong to the People's Republic of China 23 years ago, it was on the promise of Deng Xiaoping, the then paramount head of China, that Hong Kong will be run by Hong Kong people with a high degree of autonomy, which means that apart from defense and foreign affairs, we, the people of Hong Kong, will be masters of our own house in terms of the executive power, legislative power, and judicial power. Now, with the passage of this law, everything has changed. Instead of Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong, it's now the Communist Party ruling Hong Kong. Instead of we enjoying a high degree of autonomy, now the Communist Party will be ruling Hong Kong with comprehensive power of control. Now, this is what this law is all about. That they are now actually defining the new position of Hong Kong, which is, is just another Chinese city. We have no degree of autonomy at all after this. This is a problem. They have complete control over Hong Kong, even our courts. This is what they, they will do. Not with every case, but they, they told us already that in relation to some small number of cases, China may actually decide. 